Hello everybody and welcome to another Masterpiece review. In today's video, thanks to the team at Robot Kingdom, I'm taking a look at the Masterpiece movie series Bumblebee. This is the MPM7 and this is of course a Bumblebee as a Volkswagen Beetle set in the 80s uh, from the new up and coming Bumblebee movie. Actually really looking forward to seeing how that movie pans out. There's a lot of kind of G1 nods and references in it, but it's still aimed at that younger, newer audience. Uh, front of the box, pretty much what we would expect be in his bot mode and vehicle mode. Spinning it around, we see Bumblebee on the back there and we have his articulated hands, his stinger sword, his stinger blaster and his removable battle mask and we also have a hidden missile bay in his chest. Bumblebee comes packaged in a plastic clamshell surrounded by his accessories and he comes with that big hefty expandable instruction booklet that we've come to recognize from those MPM figures. And here we have him out of his packaging. Uh, he's a very nice looking figure in my opinion. The VW suits his kind of shape and size a lot more than what the Camaro does. I prefer this to the MPM Camaro, Bumblebee as well. It's just something about him. He has a much more uh, playable uh, feel about him and you can kind of move him around a lot more. And I love the paint applications. Yes, we do still suffer from the different tones of paint where they're painted over die cast, they're painted over plastic and it all kind of comes up a slightly different shade but it's very in keeping with what the vehicle is. It's a Volkswagen Beetle from the 80s and they have absolutely nailed how it looks. It's a great size, there's a good amount of mass shifting going on. Uh, he's not the most well balanced of figures. Uh, he does tend to kind of tip uh, you really need those heel spurs to have had an additional hinge in there to prop them up more than anything else. But we do get a full plethora of storage. As you can see, we've got the mask, his stinger blade and his stinger gun just mounted there on the rear of his bot mode, which is great for storage. Not the most uh, clean look for him, but I will be having his blade and gun in hand anyway with his mask attached. But the option is there for those who like this much cleaner look to him. And to finish off that look, we also have these sections that can come down. There's a tab on there. That'll tab in. And I think these are meant to be positioned down at the base of the hood. Not entirely sure, but that's, that's fantastic. I love how that looks. The head sculpt, I, I think, is one of the better head sculpts we've had. Got his little ears there. No light piping or anything in there. Uh, lots of detail, uh, kind of lost. Could have had some nice kind of shading across here. We know that somebody like Legendary Toys will just grab hold of these and paint them up uh, as they were meant to have been done. But it's not bad, it's just so much detail in there uh, as you can see we have a fair amount of die cast both in these chest panels and across the feet legs clean up pretty well and uh, we've got the vw badge on the hood great mix to die cast and that plastic i love the orange tint that's kind of sprayed around the edges as well it just kind of breaks up that flat yellow just to give you an idea of how he fares, he's a relatively good height, uh, I'd say almost Voyager, and looks very nice with that uh, MPM Optimus Prime. I'm really hoping we're gonna get the kind of G1 style MPM Optimus Prime as well from the movie. Uh, judging by the trailers, I don't know whether that's kind of like a memory scene or a holographic projection. We do see almost a kind of 3D, uh, almost computer game look at Prime and Soundwave etc in the trailers whether they'll play a pivotal part in the movie is still to be decided but I think you know I like how that looks and here we have them with the rest of the hive uh, I think the transition 
from this kind of animation style through to the new movie style and then on to his chimera size and he yes he gains in height and stature uh, i like how it looks he kind of gone from being a scout to a warrior and i think that definitely works i like how it looks and it definitely reminds me more of the bumblebee i had as a child and having children being brought up in the transformers hobby they see what i like and what i don't like i try not to influence them because they're kind of brought up in the michael bay era and that's the transformers that they know and love which i am more than happy to support uh, but they obviously have seen the original animation they see what i collect and they can relate to this bumblebee they instantly knew by looking at his vehicle mode that it was Bumblebee. It wasn't a Camara, but it was definitely Bumblebee. Now let's cover his articulation and the installation of his accessories. Uh, first off, the head it can kind of look up, ish and down. There's a little bit of a nod there more than anything else. And we can go left and we can go right. The arms can come out to the side on a friction joint. We can go up and down on, again, the same friction joint. We have rotation on that elbow and a nice 90 degree bend. We have articulated hands <laughs> as per the instruction box, uh, which can kind of twist and turn left and right. We've got rotation on that thumb and a bend on the thumb. There is waist rotation, no abdominal crunch. Legs can come this far forwards, this far back. <laughs> Love that. Out to the side there, we've got upper thigh rotation. You've got a bend on the knee, uh, hindered somewhat by the calf muscles there. Uh, not really a fan of how that sits. Uh, the feet can go up at the toe, down, and we can pivot out side to side. So again, it is limited, but it's not terrible. Uh, the head, to switch out for the battle mask, we've got this additional section which lifts up. Section pulls outwards, uh, <laughs> poor B. And then we can bring the battle mask in there. Not sure why they opted for this route as opposed to what they've done in previous installation methods uh, where they've just had it attached to the crest of the helmet, but I actually really love that look for him. Great. <laughs> uh, right, now we have the stinger gun and stinger blade. We can either have it uh, pop up here on the wrist like we get with the blade. That's kind of almost very iron hidey. Yeah, yes, that is a proper word. <laughs> uh, the thumb needs to come down. This goes down like so. The fingers need to extend out and the hand needs to be kind of flat. And basically we're going to slide these in. This is going to go into this void here. And then there is a peg just on the underside of this gun. That's gonna slide in. There we go. Slide in on the arm. Uh, see, I really like how that goes. Uh, that hides that fist really nicely. And at the same time keeps his forearm exceptionally clean. Uh, same route can be taken with the blade. You can either have it on top or it can sit using its side mount like so. So he's now got both his stinger blade and his gun so he can fight the mighty John Cena. And in my opinion that is a really Good look for Bumblebee. Uh, yes, that is the TF <laughs> Evo interpretation of Hot Rod. Uh, I've only just got him out of the box. Still need to review him. Just hoping that he doesn't fall apart throughout the video because he is kind of uber fragile. Now, personally, I think he actually scales a lot better with the oversized version of Bumblebee, but that's a completely different story. For now, we're focusing on this. It's a fun toy you've even got a little wrist pivot in there so yeah okay i don't like the fingers as much as some of the third party hands but i think they've definitely made 
the best move they could have done with this and it's awesome yes okay we're going to get probably uh, the fourth party uh, make this bigger uh, probably give it a better paint job but support this product guys and girls hasbro and takara are absolutely nailing these movie figures but anyway enough of me fan gushing now if you've already got your shoulder mounts up we need to bring them down and they just need to come across and kind of just tap in to this chest area we want to come around to the back of the feet push this piece down so it clicks out this is going to come up and that's going to come out to the side foot can come down the wheel can go up and around the shin comes up the toe piece comes up and using this hinge bring the leg straight this will then come up but it will then hinge over and go up and over this piece so we go up and in make sure that this metal piece here sits flush and then we can just flip that up like so and they're now sat nicely in that crotch area these toes then collapse onto the backs of the legs can then bring this piece up and over that's going to form the entire rear of the car collapses down we can then bring these in together and they're just going to tab in like so for now come back round to the front now you want to bring these shoulder tabs down which include the wheel sections and pull these out on this folded hinge that's just going to come all the way out like so and we've got these wheel arches which come around and fold outwards really love how tidily everything kind of comes across with this and much like we got with the other bee this section comes up but now it's going to form the rear windows so that's going to come up and sit to the side of this piece and again with this one this just comes up over and then comes down we can then lift up the hood unfold it lift this piece up this is then going to rock upwards there's these sections at the front of that bumper section they just bend upwards uh, mine does tend to like spring off of this section i don't know if that's normal <laughs> but mine definitely does it uh, these pieces here come up so that they can come up level with that bonnet we have a bumblebee head here this can come forwards like so flattening out as it goes the head folds backwards and then that goes underneath the car these doors then go back and go back i'm going to remove the gun from his hand popping that up and i'll remove his stinger the arms rotate so that these panels are now facing the front and from there they are going to rotate around so that they're facing the other way like this bring these arms up to the top and then this panel here comes untabbed from the side dropping those shoulders downwards and from this position this panel is then going to rotate around once again grab this arm hinge and this is going to untab like so and that's going to come all the way around and then we can bend this arm in like so that's going to go into this void at the back here behind these doors and there's this hinge just here this needs to go over that lip so you need to make sure that's over the lip and this comes down uh, it's to come up to the side these go down sitting in this void at the back here so it's all starting to tidy itself up these door pieces come down either side allows these to rock backwards and basically this is going to fill in all of this lovely void 
here. These are going to come over to the side. And we've got a tab just This is going to fit in snugly and the secret to getting these tabbed in properly is just to make sure that that hinge is nice and straight and just give that a push so it sits flat. These should now tab in just there on the wheel arch and then slides in tabbing in nice and cleanly onto that bonnet piece. Really does tidy up rather nicely and nice and firm. Now these here, they are going to compress on themselves again using that double hinge system. And this is going to just sit in behind this wheel arch. This flips up so it fills in the panel of the car. And then these should <laughs> should uh, all tab in together. So we're going to slide that down behind this door, like so. It's then going to come up, and this is going to slide in behind this panel. We'll cover off the back of the wheel arch, and this tab here tabs in on the wheel arch itself. As we bring this down, I make sure this window is up just so we've got enough leverage to slide that piece inwards. This will then rock backwards and there's a tab just on the wheel arch itself, making sure everything is lined up and tab in securely on there. And then we can slide that window back down. That's going to tab everything in, make sure that the foot piece is down. And then once all of this has kind of squared up and just tabbed in where it should be. We will then have the ability to rock that hood, rock the roof panel back up and over, and that's going to slide in behind these windows. And they will just push and tab in. And we're here we have him fully transformed up into his bug mode. I'm not sure if I've done that completely right. Some of the tabs just don't tab in quite as nicely as I would have liked, but it's not bad, not bad at all. Love the coloration on it. I love that kind of gold, orangey kind of panel where it's faded. Uh, would have been nice even if they'd had some random colors on there just to uh, say that parts have been replaced over time. Uh, the back doesn't clean up as nicely as I would have liked, uh, but uh, Vegas can't be choosers. These feet panels are quite visible from where I'm standing. The wheels do roll, but the clearance is very minimal. I'll say it time and time again, I'm not a fan of storage uh, for weapons, uh, but this does work. It just plugs on to the back there and he can kind of tow it around with him. Like I said, it does roll, but the clearance is very, very minimal. Uh, maybe I've done something wrong with the wheels, I'm not sure. I can't seem to bring those down any further. Maybe that's been lowered over time. But there he is, there we have a Bumblebee in his vehicle mode. Now, the oversized Bumblebee is the next step up. That's the Kubenbau oversized masterpiece Bumblebee. Bringing in the likes of Skids and Barricade. I think they actually look remarkably good together. I think that's a pretty darn good scale. And we can even bring in Wei Zhang's Brawl to give you an idea of how they fare. Uh, we've gone from like the Bumblebee movie to the 2007 movie. Uh, so I think that's a pretty uh, reasonable scale. Um, uh, possibly Human Alliance figures look a fraction too big. And my personal favorite is the Wei Zhang Optimus Prime. That's the oversized studio series. I think those look really nice together. So there we have it, ladies and gentlemen, the MPM7 Bumblebee. Uh, mine doesn't quite tab in where I'd like it to, but that's probably me, not you. <laughs>
love the wheels uh, we could do with some rubber on there we've got a very visible kind of undercarriage section there which isn't completely untoward just wish we could kind of see his head a little bit better uh, maybe if this uh, drip pan kind of detaches or falls off then his head becomes kind of more visible uh, but all in all it's a very nice figure I'm glad I invested in it. Yes, I'm a little bit late to the party, but I'm glad I got there eventually. We do only have the one wing mirror, which is exactly what we used to get on the old VWs. And of course it is positioned on the driver's side as opposed to the passenger side as the VWs were built in Germany. Thank you all for watching. Once again, I'd like to thank Robot Kingdom for making this review possible. If you found it useful, give it a big thumbs up, share, and of course, subscribe. If you'd like to support this and the KO channel, then feel free to leave a tip in the coffee cup or, of course, join our Patreon team. Until next time, from myself and Bumblebee, thanks for watching. Goodbye.